NASA has just announced that the Betelgeuse may finally have exploded, with the event being visible in the sky for the coming months. This allows observers a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to closely study the effects of a stellar explosion. Let's take a closer look. The starting phase for all stars, including our Sun, begins when a dense region in a nebula begins to shrink and warm up. This is usually the result of one of several events that may occur to initiate the gravitational collapse of a molecular cloud. How this occurs includes galactic collisions or a devastating nearby supernova explosion sending ruptured matter into the clouds at very high speeds. Each of these stellar maternity wards can form anything from a few dozen to thousands of stars. To form a star like our Sun, which is 864,400 miles across, it would take a collection of gas and dust a hundred times the size of our solar system. This is just the beginning. Once such a large amount of gas and dust huddle together, they form what we call a protostar. An object is considered a protostar for as long as the material is still falling inward. For our Sun, and stars of the same mass, the protostar phase would have ended after approximately 100,000 years. After this, the protostar stops growing and the disk of material surrounding it is destroyed by radiation. If the protostar was unsuccessful in acquiring enough mass, a brown dwarf will come into shape. These poor little guys are substellar objects that are unable to sustain hydrogen fusion reactions in their cores due to their insufficient mass. Main sequence stars have no issue with this, to the envy of brown dwarfs. Putting it simply, a brown dwarf is too big to be called a planet and too small to be called a star. Until 1995, they were only a theoretical concept. It is now thought, however, that there is a brown dwarf for every six stars. If the star is big enough to fuse hydrogen atoms into helium, it will enter the phase that our sun is in, called the main sequence phase. A star will enjoy most of its life in the main sequence phase. At this point, nuclear fusion is turning hydrogen into helium. The star is only stable because the light pressure of this energy balances out the star's gravitational collapse. Approximately 9 out of 10 stars in the universe are main sequence stars. These stars can range from around a tenth of the mass of our Sun up to 200 times as massive, and how long a star will stay in the main sequence phase depends on its size. A star with higher mass might have more material to play around with, but it will burn faster due to its higher core temperatures caused by greater gravitational forces. A star the size of our Sun will spend about 10 billion years in this phase, but a star 10 times the size of our own will stick around for only 20 million years. After the main sequence phase, the star will become a red giant. A red giant is a dying star in one of the last stages of stellar evolution. In a few billion years, our Sun will die and expand, gobbling up inner planets and maybe even the Earth. After stars stop converting hydrogen into helium via nuclear fusion, gravity will take over. It's all downhill from here. Red giant stars reach sizes of 62 million to 621 million miles in diameter, 100 to 1,000 times the size of the Sun today. The energy of the star is spread out across a larger area, like the pixels when one expands a raster graphic. Because of this, the star becomes cooler, reaching only a little more than half the heat of the sun. The temperature change causes stars to shine more towards the red part of the spectrum. It is this that gives a red giant its name. Where a star goes from this point depends on its size. Let's first go with the less violent option. Smaller stars, up to around eight times the mass of our sun, can become white dwarfs. These old stellar remnants are incredibly dense. A teaspoon of their matter would weigh as much on Earth as an elephant. That's five and a half tons and one incredibly strong teaspoon. A white dwarf's radius is just 0 0.01 times that of our Sun, but the mass is about the same. Estimating how long a white dwarf has been cooling helps astronomers increase their understanding of how old the universe is. 
After an unimaginable amount of time, tens or even hundreds of billions of years, a white dwarf will cool until it becomes a black dwarf, which are invisible because they are emitting at the same temperature as the microwave background. Because of the age of the universe and what we know about its oldest stars, there are no known black dwarfs. Alternatively, a star with at least eight solar masses will have a much more violent, yet much more beautiful death. Massive stars can create a supernova when they run out of fuel. When supernovae explode, they fling their guts into space at speeds of 9,000 to 25,000 miles per second. These blasts produce much of the material in the universe, including some heavy elements such as iron, which help to make up both ourselves and our planet, so all of us carry the remnants of these explosions in our bodies. The cycle starts all over again with a new generation of stars, and new stars are born from the stardust left behind in the same way. That doesn't mean it's the end of the road for what remains of the star. After the supernova explosion, the star's core is left behind in the form of either a black hole or a neutron star, both of which are incredibly destructive and violently beautiful. Neutron stars are hard to find and are very mysterious objects. They are extremely dense. If one takes the mass of our sun, doubles it, and then shrinks it down to the size of Los Angeles, that's roughly how dense a neutron star is. A cubic meter of a neutron star would weigh just less than 400 billion tons. All of that density makes their surface gravity truly immense. Alternatively, what's left after the supernova can become a black hole. Black holes pull the space around them. They need to have a massive amount of mass in an incredibly small space to have the required gravity to pull in light. To put this into perspective, to make a black hole out of the Earth, the entire planet would need to be squeezed down to the size of a pea. These mysterious and frightening objects can slow down time and rip you apart, and nothing can escape the grasp of a black hole when it reaches its event horizon. Any matter that enters its path is never seen again. They're the playground bully of the universe, but unlike playground bullies, we might depend on them to live. Some researchers think black holes help create the elements because they break down matter into subatomic particles. These particles make up everything around us. We owe the stars our lives. Whether it's big or small, young or old, you can't argue that stars are some of the most beautiful and poetic objects in all of creation. Betelgeuse is a star nearing the end of its life. Because it is creating heavier and heavier elements in its core that could be used for stars after it dies, a NASA story once dubbed this red giant a workaholic. The star is famous among amateur astronomers not only for its size and brightness, but also because it is a part of Orion, a bright winter constellation in the northern hemisphere. Professional astronomers also keep a close eye on the star as it is notoriously variable. Its diameter changes from anywhere between 550 to 920 times the sun's diameter. In 2013, astronomers said Betelgeuse is likely to crash into a cosmic wall of interstellar dust in a few thousand years. Ancient astronomers would have easily spotted Betelgeuse because of its size and relatively close distance from Earth. It is about 600 light years away and has a variable brightness generally peaking at 0.4 and falling below 1.2. Some 20th century observations by the American Association of Variable Star Observers suggested peak magnitudes of 0.2 in 1933 and 1942. It is the 12th brightest star in the night sky. It is probable that the name Betelgeuse originated in Arabic words, but the star had other names in Sanskrit, traditional Chinese, and even Hawaiian. When astronomers say Betelgeuse is expected to explode soon, they mean shortly in astronomical terms, within a million years, according to several sources. Predicting exactly when it will turn into a supernova is difficult, however, as it depends on precise calculations of its mass, as well as an understanding of what is going on inside the star. Betelgeuse is so vast, its size would extend beyond Jupiter's orbit if it were placed in the Sun's position in the solar system, that several telescopes have captured images of the star and spotted its shedding mass. Starting in 1993 and continuing for at least 15 years, its radius shrank by 15%, an astonishing amount for such a short time. As the star prepares for what could be a large explosion, another challenge awaits. 
It is expected to crash into a wall of interstellar dust in the next few thousand years. Analyzing data from NASA's Hubble Space Telescope and several other observatories, astronomers have concluded that the bright red supergiant star Betelgeuse quite literally blew its top in 2019, losing a substantial part of its visible surface and producing a gigantic surface mass ejection. These new observations yield clues as to how red stars lose mass late in their lives as their nuclear fusion furnaces burn out before exploding a supernovae. The amount of mass loss significantly affects their fate. However, Betelgeuse's surprisingly petulant behavior is not evidence that the star is about to blow up anytime soon. So, the mass loss event is not necessarily the signal of an imminent explosion. Scientists are hard at work analyzing data from different sources to piece together the puzzle of the star's petulant behavior before, after, and during the eruption. Scientists state that they have never before seen a huge mass ejection of the surface of a star. We are witnessing something that we don't completely understand. It is like watching stellar evolution in real time. The Titanic outburst in 2019 was possibly caused by a convective plume, more than a million miles across, bubbling up from deep inside the star. It produced shocks and pulsations that blasted off the chunk of the photosphere, leaving the star with a large cool surface area under the dust cloud that was produced by the cooling piece of the photosphere. Betelgeuse is now struggling to recover from this injury. Weighing roughly several times as much as our moon, the fractured piece of photosphere sped off into space and cooled to form a dust cloud that blocked light from the star as seen by Earth observers. The dimming, which began in late 2019 and lasted for a few months, was easily noticeable even by backyard observers watching the star change brightness. If you like this video, you may also like this one, which talks about the Ingenuity Helicopter's amazing discovery on Mars. Do you think Betelgeuse will go supernova in our lifetime? Please share your thoughts in the comment section below.